All right, I'm going to do one of my favorite demonstrations. We've got a metal can which has got around about half a litre of water in it and for the last five or ten minutes I've been boiling the water fairly vigorously um, and so what I want is to have a lot of steam coming out the top. So we've now got a can boiling water full of steam and what we do is we seal up the can and turn off the heat that's the important part. And we let the can start to cool back down. And something rather spectacular should happen. So we can help cool it down with this little uh, gun filled with cold water. And the gun in the cold water does a really good job because uh, it's very similar to your body sweating. You have a whole pile of uh, moisture on the outside and it evaporates, you can see the steam coming off. So we cool this can down and so what should be happening inside there at the moment is that as the, as the interior gets cold, the steam that was uh, filling the inside of the can just before I sealed it should start condensing back into water again and the pressure inside the can should start dropping really rapidly. So we should get a really good vacuum inside the can and eventually the, uh, the pressure of the atmosphere outside is going to be so much higher than the pressure inside the can that the can is going to hopefully collapse on itself. When it does so, it's going to happen pretty quickly and pretty spectacular, so keep watching. Whoop. Start to make some noise. And there we go. And so you can see at the moment the can, as it builds up enough pressure to uh, compress itself, will uh, collapse and it will try and reduce its volume towards zero in order to get the pressure on the inside of the can higher so that uh, the force on the walls disappears. Now a really neat thing you can do here is you can take the can when it's cooled down and you can fill it up with water and pour the water out and you can work out what the volume of, uh, of the can is after the experiment and you can do a calculation backwards to work out uh, what the equivalent force on the, uh, on the can is and if you do the numbers you find that uh, the force just in terms of the top and the bottom of the can is actually quite large it can be as much as putting uh, half a tonne sorry, five, um, as, as much as putting a half a tonne or a tonne worth of mass on top of the can, um, almost the equivalent of two Harley Davidsons or a, or a light car. Okay, I think that's all it's going to do.